We're always waiting. So, oh, I haven't got the wrong read that one yet. I'll have a read of that afterwards. Yeah. <sighs> Tell you what, Easter folks. Easter folks, this is the best time ever for being a Rugby League fan. My name's Dave Parkinson, this is of course Love Rugby League Weekly, joined by the gruesome twosome of Rugby League Chit Chat. <laughs> it's Drew Derbyshire, it's James Messenger. I'm only kidding of course, folks. Um, thoughts? On oh, this past week, yes. What's on the going past on? week? What, what uh, stuff happening? I think there was, a, it, it was quite a big surprise in the Saints Warrington game, wasn't it? Uh, I not a lot of people were surprised that Saints won it, but say a lot of people were surprised, including myself, in the manner in which they won it. I thought it was going to be much closer than that. I actually think I put on uh, Drew's double last week that uh, it was going to be a tie <laughs> after the 80 minutes. Um, there's no chance of that happening, was there? Uh, so, yeah, um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good game, wasn't it? It was a, it was a, a nice surprise um, because... James has been giving it beans over Warrington in, re in recent weeks. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, it would be fair to say, you know, you've been really confident, James. Yeah. Do you feel like that the, you, you've had the rung of the ladder sort of yeah. took off you a little bit? I think it was a, a bit of a reality check, probably, because I think, I think, I think the thing with that game is that Saints once they got a couple of tries, they they, they kicked on quite a lot. The uh, and they, they, they produced a really good performance. As Drew said, you don't expect that kind of a difference in scoreline. Yeah. But then once they had the momentum, there wasn't a way back in for Warrington. They, they just kept going, they kept moving forward with the Saints and the really good performance. But I don't think as well we can uh, go through this episode without talking about Mark Snaid once again. Another drop goal, Hull mm. FC. Yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to that because he's been in the news as well, hasn't he? So, mm. uh, but what I want to do, oh, we've done our sort of introduction. You know what we're talking about. We are Love Rugby League Weekly in association with Betfred. Uh, what's on site? What can people have a look at, Drew? Uh, off the record, went on online uh, on Wednesday. I've not that's, caught up with it. What's the, the big rumour? Oh, well, you're going to have to click <laughs> on it, Dave. Yeah. You're going to have to click on it and find out what's the big rumour. There's a lot of speculation surrounding the uh, state of mind round in, in Super League um, for the foreseeable future. What? They, they don't about getting rid of it? Yeah. Really? They're on about, they're on about um, Why? maybe being dropped. Um, are, are they are, are they confident that you know everyone's state of mind is good now, so we don't need to. No, that it, it's, it might be being replaced by something else, another round of similar sorts. You know what I think they'll, they'll probably end up doing. They'll probably end up doing like the NRL, will where everyone will end up in wearing pink and different shades, and we'll have a women's round. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to be a thing, hasn't it? You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got the pep talk on. Um, we've got plenty of features on site this week. We've got all the latest news that we'll we'll no doubt talk about, Dave. Uh, so head over to loverbelieve.com and check out the latest news, features, videos, podcasts, you name it. Well, to, to be fair, to be fair, I've put in a what's to come section because I've not had a chance to upload two podcasts that I've done <laughs> for, as a bit of an Easter special. So it will be possibly a late Easter special now because I'm not sure quite how whether I'll be able to get them on today and, and stuff like that. Uh, but the two podcasts that I've got ready to just about go live, I've got a special on Thato Heath that was down there last week when they played against Dewsbury in the Challenge Cup. They also won the Barla National Cup, which we're going to talk about, just touch upon in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, and our Steve Manning uh, caught up with the coach who actually played the last time that Thato Heath won the Barla National Cup. So there's a real good story there, and I, I really wanted to bring that to more people so that people could listen in. Uh, I've also done a little bit of a special because last week I was over at the first round of the President's Cup, which is it's representative rugby. You know, So you've got teachers, you've got universities, you've got the UK Armed Forces, and the police who all play off against each other in a round-robin format over the course of about six or seven weeks every year. So the first round of fixtures happened last weekend, or last week, I should say, over at Lee Miners. And uh, I had a great chat with the coach of the UK Armed Forces, so that I'm really looking forward to bringing that to, to a wider audience as well. Uh, so yeah, so that's what's to come. Uh, I was thinking about your thoughts though, because we do love your involvement on this here show. Um, what do you make of Wakefield's business? This week they've re-signed David Fafita, Kyle Wood, and they brought Mason Caton Brown back in, who had the 
the quickest vacation in Canada known to man. He, he lasted, what, about four or five matches at the end of last season and now he's back in rugby league. Yeah, well, he uh, he only signed the deal until the end of last season, didn't he? He only, he only signed with Toronto on, on short terms and then I, I believe he's had a, a very, very brief stint in uh, Rugby Union 7s, uh, playing for the England side in Rugby Union 7s. Uh, oh, and did he go on that route? Yeah. See, yeah. I, I've heard that they're on about cutting the money down that they pay uh, out in the 7s as well because um, well, it, apparently it costs a lot of money to send England Rugby Union 7s to all four corners of the world yeah so uh yeah he's been he's been doing that for a little bit but obviously wakefield has uh, have come in for him and said uh there's a spot for you on the wing at bellevue or the mobile rocket stadium and uh he's taking it with open arms obviously he's, he's got a massive opportunity you now to to shine and to show what he's really about obviously it, it was kind of the backup for tom johnston and ben jones bishop last time around at wakefield but this time he'll have a starting position, he'll get a, a good run of games under his belt. Uh, we'll see what he's made of, uh, for sure. James, I know you're in the uh, David Fafita fan club. Is I this know. the best bit of business so far in Super League, yeah. tying him down for another three oh, years? Definitely, because I think you look at Fafita and how he's performed, and I don't know if it's just me, but I think a lot of fans might have thought that he probably could have moved on to maybe bigger and better things, whether that was going back to the NRL, playing for a, a top of the table side, but then the fact that they've tied him down is really good business. I think he's a He's an excellent player, he adds a lot of grunt to that forward pack, but it's the fact that the stats it's producing week after week are ridiculous. Like I think in, in Wakefield's last game, I might be wrong, I think he played the full 80 minutes and for, for a forward that's all, almost unheard of. And I think I think he's been their shining light this year. I, well, I'll, I'll just sort of say, up until probably about 10 years ago, it was the norm really. For yeah, uh, uh, to, but uh, now, uh, now it's, it's become that, sort of where a lot of people, they don't sort of see that anymore, do you? Of course, of course. They're used to spells, aren't they? Well, that, that, that's the thing. Normally, in, in the modern age, the prop forward what, gets 20 or 30 minutes, has a breather, has a half time and comes back out. So they're normally doing about 40 to 50 minutes mm. each. Mm. But the fact that he's done 80 minutes and he's, I think he's, he's got the most tackle bus this season or he's up there for the most tackle bus out of anyone in Super League. And I think out of, out of the business that they've done in the last few weeks, he's been far and away the best one. Other things that perhaps you could talk about or, you know, chuck into the debate are uh, maybe um, uh, there's always somebody from Hull around about this time of year releases an article saying that the Hull derby is the biggest in rugby <laughs> league. I've already had my say on, uh, on my social media. I reckon you can't look any bigger than Lee Mines against Lee East. <laughs> OK, but if you've got a different opinion, you want to voice it, then by all means join in. Um, another thing as well. We're going to say it's for me. Quality Where's banter. Quality banter in rugby league. It's back thanks to Warrington and Witness and the way that they've been interacting this week. It was superb, wasn't it? The initially the the video from Warrington was was great. It was it, it had everyone kind of laughing and poking fun at Witness, and then Witness came back with an even even better tweet. Witness uh, on the internet, I think, for a yeah, while. Yeah, the, Vi that, the Vikings roasted the Wolves, uh, and it, it was just it's great to see on social media. This, I think this is what Rugby League needs. Rugby League needs uh, to be different from all the other sports. I know it's the professional look in football where there's not much going on on social media. It's very, very official. Uh, but I think Rugby League, to, to maybe sell more tickets, but just to keep fans engaged, I think this is the kind of stuff that, that, that we need to see. And Warrington have killed it in the off-season. We, off we well. also saw St. Helens last week as well, for, yeah. uh, putting that picture on of the letter which had got sent to Wolfie, banning him from the stadium, and then the whole Wolfie turning up at the ground yeah, well, and that the, type of stuff. The, the interesting, Again, it's great, isn't it? Well, the interesting thing this year is I think a lot of the clubs have looked at Warrington and they've seen them doing a lot of that social media stuff and they've seen how many more tickets have sold for, for certain games. And obviously, if you're another Super League club, you, you want a chunk of that, you want to increase your crowds. And I think that's something that's been really good. I think... I saw that the, the two Hull sides were doing a little bit of back and forth. They've had, they've had a lot of different things. I think some of the championship as well. And I saw today Swinton Lions trying to get in on the act with their game in Rochdale Hornets. So it's, it seems a no-brainer, really. And you think about how in the past a lot of them have been quite professional in the Twitter output. But then being professional doesn't necessarily get people to want to go to the games. Whereas if you're promoting it, making a big deal out of the players, poking fun, building those rivalries, that's what's going to get people going. Okay, so again, I'd love your thoughts on that particular uh, we'll, we'll, issue. Yeah, we also saw, I think I think it was Wigan doing the tweet as well, um, with the, the little meme of the, the man of the woman and the man turning <laughs> around, and it said, um, 
the, the whole fans looking back at the Wigan and Saints derby and then Hull reply saying, uh, is a derby the same if you're not in the, even in the same town? So uh, <laughs> there's been plenty of banter flying around on, on social media between all clubs. I nearly responded to that Wigan one. And what I was going to set up is that, that me, me, where he's looking. And he's going, that's, yeah. that's rugby union. <laughs> and then you've got Wigan Rugby League is the girl on his arm and that's Sean Edwards looking away and looking <laughs> back you know what, I, think, I think someone did reply with that did they? I think someone replied with Wales Rugby Union badge with Wigan and Sean Edwards in the middle I, I was seriously thinking of doing yeah. that and then I thought yeah. Nah. But nah that, I, I, I think that reply nearly got as many likes as, as the, <laughs> the, the official Wigan tweet. But uh, I, I, I love it, mate. No matter which club it is, I think even if you're one of the, the smaller clubs in the divisions, like like the Swinton Lions, they've got involved with it today. Uh, it just boosts the profile, doesn't well, it, it? it? You can't beat it. Well, it doesn't even necessarily have to just be Derby as well. I think we saw earlier in the season you had. Um, when Castleford were going to play St. Helens mm. and they were dubbing it as Classy Cast versus the Entertainers and there, that's not a particular derby, that's just a high quality game and then I think Warrington actually got in there and replied with something like, oh how cute, it's obviously taken a leaf out of there but, but it's, it's good to see all teams getting involved with this and I think over time we'll, we'll probably see more more fans going through the we, gates. We even saw it with uh, Batley and Dewsbury, didn't we, with the mascots as well mm, earlier yes. on in the season. That, so so, great, that. so great, fair play to them, I've actually... I, I only realised that, well, I've only found out officially um, this week or last week, I can't remember which day in particular it was, but uh, the clubs uh, are going to get funding or something like that, depending on how they are on social media. There's, um, there's a return on investment, yeah, which yeah. everybody's talking about. So as part of return on investment, mm -hmm. it's numbers signed up to our league, it's followers on Twitter and Facebook, it's how active your social media presence is. There's all kinds of stuff that is sort of worked in. Because I read something from, uh, I think it was Oldham, and Oldham are ranked something like 14th out of the championship clubs and, the, and, and League One clubs, of course. And obviously they're looking at improving their standing, you know, so uh, they're, they're quite good on social media as well with the kind of things they put out there. But there's always room for improvement. There's always ways to go forward. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if anyone's seen my tweet. Um last week on the Love Rubber League account where uh, I, I replied to Sporth Sweet on Messi playing the game with a sore eye with a, <laughs> a picture of Cooper Cronk uh, who played the NRL Grand Final last year with a broken shoulder. Uh, we, had quite, we had quite a lot of football fans uh, replying to us, giving us a little bit of stick about that, but I think we had about two and a half thousand likes on the, on the tweet there, so we're, we're, we're getting involved as well. Okay. Okay. Well, that's right. I'll have to join in. I'll have to yeah. join in. Uh, I I prefer a, a real professional <laughs> look at social media. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go checking my feed. In fact, yeah, I do do. Uh, no, I'm only kidding. Um, we've already touched on the man, Mark Snead, three-year contract at Hull. What do you reckon about it? Um, there's other people in the media who don't particularly rate Mark Snead. I've got to be honest. I think he's a fantastic kicker. I think what he can't do with the ball and kicking it. In rugby, he's, he's tremendous. Yeah. But I think he could be a better halfback. Yeah, hundred percent. I think there's something missing. There's something, thought, just that missing, just that a little bit of class for me. Yeah. I, I'm big on defence, me though, as you, as you know. What, and I, I think he's a, he struggles defending at times. Um, I think he gets rolled over a couple of a couple of times per game. Uh, so I think he could, can improve on that. But with the introduction of the golden points extra time this season, does that does that up Sneed's value because he's kicking because yeah. obviously he's already won two games for Hull FC this season. Well, one of my notes for when we talk about the Super League actually. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, no, no. <laughs> it's actually it's talking about Hull being Golden Point specialists yeah. um, and they've got a they have a Golden Point yeah, specialist so, in the ranks. So, do, so does the introduction of the Golden Point rule um, make it all the more important for kickers? We we look back at last season, Warrington in particular struggled for drop goals. Yeah. They couldn't. They couldn't. Nail a drop goal. Yeah, they couldn't hit a band door with a banjo. Uh, I, I <laughs> remember their efforts. Uh, 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 there were so many times I lost count of how many times Tyron Roberts put a daisy cutter along the along the ground. Um, went straight under the crossbar and wide. And obviously De Declan Batten's a fantastic kicker, but he weren't playing all game every game, mm -hmm. uh, so he weren't on the field. Uh, Stefan Ratchford isn't as experienced as a, as a Mark Snee, for example, at taking a, a drop goal. So I, I definitely think it um, it, it adds a, a couple of noughts onto the, the price tag of, yeah. of players these days. Because look at Wigan as well. 
We're gonna. I haven't got a drop goal specialist, but. Well, we haven't even got a kicker. Well, they've not. They've not. They've not. They've not had one for a, for, for quite a while. We're gonna have the. They've not had a kicker for quite a while. They pressed Smith into duties, yeah. didn't they? When he was there, really, and, and he, he wasn't he, as renowned um, before uh, he yeah, left there. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think since since Wigan got rid of well Richards, really. Pat, Pat Richards yeah, Richard uh, left the club. Uh, Wigan haven't had a serious kicker because obviously Charlie had a go uh, mm. when he was at Wigan, then Smith had a go, uh, Sam Tompkins had a go, George Williams had a go, and now obviously Zach Hardick has got the, the duties at the moment. Um, but, but even he didn't kick last week, no. it was Escary, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so Escary. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm in the belief of a kicker is so important to a team. Every, every team needs a solid goal kicker because it wins and loses games. Well, if it, say, say, if it, say if you score eight tries in a game and you yeah. only kick four, four or five of them goals, that's six points that you've missed out on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's and then it tries, it, 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 it can be, it can be yeah. fine. And it? especially this season as well, when you see how the table is shaping up, you see how close everyone is in that, in that chasing pack in the yeah, race for the top five. And, and you, you know what point is it's not really when you look at it. When you look at the league table. Compare this to last year if Hull would have drawn those games as opposed to picking the two wins up. That's two extra points they've got. And you, those those drop goals, I think, will be really crucial at the end of the season. Right, because I just want to I just want to drop in here. If you look at the point difference currently in the Super League table, you've got St. Helens and Warrington are way away. So, you know, St. Helens of 157, Warrington 135. But everybody else other than London Broncos is much of a muchness. So you've got Castleford plus 41, Wakefield plus 39, Hull minus 24, Catalans minus 83. They've took a couple of beatings as we know. Mm -hmm. Salford plus eight, Huddersfield minus 42, Hull Kingston Rovers minus 45, Wigan 14, and Leeds Rhinos minus 76. Mm. So it, it could have a big yeah, impact. Yeah, it shows how important that goal kicking is. Just um, look back to to quite a few years ago now when Kevin Sinfield were at Leeds. How many games did Kevin Sinfield win for Leeds just with his kicking ability? Oh, well, me and you have had loads of discussions yeah. about those two over the years. Uh, well, about him and comparing him and all Lachlan yeah. down the years, yeah. haven't we? You know, and right. I, I've always said that I would sooner have had a Sinfield in my team because he was always he was always <laughs> he worth, like that. He was always worth that ten points. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do want to understand what you're saying. It's it's exactly the same with the halfbacks. We don't we, we hardly see any halfbacks kicking um, as it, as close to hundred percent as as what we used to. Mm. Um, Take Leeds, Leeds now, for example. You they know what we need again? They change the kickers regularly. We need a Fran Robotica, don't we, to come back <laughs> into rugby league? Well, I tell you, he's a brilliant kicker, uh, but obviously they're not getting in the starting teams at the moment. Declan Patton at Warrington yeah. and uh, Danny Richardson at St. Helens. Danny, they, they've both got very good boots on them, but obviously, they, uh, and the pro, um, Richardson's a better goal kicker than Theo Farge, uh, Farge and Johnny Lomax. And that Patton's a better kicker than um, Blake Austin and, well, and, and yeah. Kevin Brown. Are, are, are you, are you starts, just doing so. Championship Manager Rugby League stuff <laughs> now? You know, it's sort of like they've been comparing spreadsheets yeah. and stuff. Have you like, got, got them all out? No, I don't, I don't, I, I, I've, I've, I've always been baffled when coaches have not really prioritised a kicker and just thought, oh, we'll, we'll give it in. Oh, well, uh, you're on duties today. <laughs> he can't play. You're, you're kicking today. Uh, I think... You, you get four points for a try, two points for a kick. If you miss two kicks, that's a try. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm conscious we've had a couple of comments, so I just Sorry. want to come to uh, something that Phil has uh, said. He says, do you know if the two players from Dewsbury and Thatter were okay? I've not seen anything on social media. There was a, a sitting in clash after about 70 minutes or 72 minutes between two players. The ball went up and it was just uh, bang, both there. Ed. Yeah, both ended up getting stretched off. Fortunately, both are okay. Cam Lehman... He was the Dewsbury player. It, I saw him leave the ground actually with his parents, so I think other than a sore head, he, he's okay. Um, and the lads at Thato were saying that the full back who injured himself, Hayes, is also in a good, 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 good place, good. best place now. So um, that's uh, great to hear. I wouldn't like to have been them waking up the next morning. Oh, no, no. Um, lots of. Uh, well, it's frazzled, frazzled heads. We're going to put a parasite Phil also says Danny Richardson at the moment thinks Saints are missing his kicking. I've had this conversation with a couple of members of the media. Um, we're, I'm a massive Danny Richardson fan. Uh, I think he's, he's nowhere near his peak. I think he's, he's still very, very raw. 
Uh, but I, I, I think he's still got loads of improvements in him. Uh, I just look at what he did for, for Saints last season. He won, he won Saints games last season. I remember, was it against Leeds, at Leeds, uh, where he nailed the drop goal? Yeah, uh, was right a, at the end, was it 23-22 or something like I, that? I don't know why I mentioned it, but didn't he also signal the end of Warrington's hopes? In yeah, one game with a, a penalty after the loser. Yeah, yeah. Um, that just shows how important it is. But uh, you can't you can't complain if you say it's can you? You've got Richardson, you've got Faz, you've got Lomax, you've got Kutu who's got an exceptional kicking game as yeah. well. And, and he's probably kicking about 75, 80% yeah. of his goals at the moment, so, isn't he? So. And it's not just that, he's on field kicking as well because he's a left footed kicker, it adds a different dimension. Plus, um, you, plus you've got James Roby as well coming out and coming out of dummy half, he likes to kick downfield and he looks yeah. for his 40 20s. Yeah, but if, I think if, if Danny Richardson was at any, any other Super League club, literally any other. Any other Super League club at the moment, I think he'd, I think he'd, be, I think he'd be starting. Yeah, We're going to be yeah. starting. Warrington, I think he'd, yeah. he'd possibly be starting alongside Blake Austin. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe you went to a Challenge Cup game at the weekend as well. What were your thoughts? Did you see some of the crowds? Is that something you want us talking about? Because let's be honest, it's not the big draw card that it once was the Challenge Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you reckon about Easter games? You know? Do we play too much at Easter? Or are you off the same mindset as me? Whereas, you know, this is the best time of the year for being a rugby league fan. It is, isn't it? It's, it's probably the best time of the year to be a rugby league fan, the worst time of the year to be a rugby league player. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? It's, that, that's probably the case. A lot of fans look forward to it. Obviously, four days um, for most people off work. On the first day, uh, you're at a local derby. Uh, well, it tends to be a local derby, and then you, you finish your four day weekend by uh, attending another game. Mm. Us as speckies, us as journals, us as fans, we love it. I love it because like, I grew up as a Wigan fan and I get to go to a Wigan Saints game on Good Friday and Good Friday games between them. To be fair though, you could mix it up a bit. You could go to, you know, you could go to a Batley Jewsbury. Swinton v Rochdale. You could, head, you could <laughs> head up and really, really push Whitehaven and Workington. I could. <laughs> but I'll go to Wigan Saints. Uh, and, and then I'm, I, I love it. It's, it's, you can see both sides of the argument because we're, we're, we always bang on now about play welfare, don't we? Play welfare is mentioned all the time. A clash of heads, play welfare is mentioned. Player gets stretched. A cannonball tackle, play, uh, players welfare is mentioned. Uh, we obviously seen uh, Chris Chester's comments after the Wigan game last week about the, uh, a couple of cannonball tackles and stuff like that. So play welfare is mentioned every single week. No doubt about it in Super League. Have you so actually what... heard any any court? Because you know this used to be the time of year when Tony Smith, for example, and yeah. all, the, all his days when he was over here and he was coaching Warrington and Huddersfield and like, he'd have a real go at this time of year. Wouldn't yeah, he? well, he'd be the, the the most vocal of all the coaches. I can't remember actually reading anything no, this year that anybody's ever got it this time. We've not seen but, a lot of it, have we, really? But I, th- I think people just get used to it because obviously we have this conversation every year and it, it is every year we, we say, oh, is it too long? Is it is it a bit much on players? Because they're not just playing two games in four days, they're playing three games in seven days, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, so w- Which is, is brutal to say it's professional sport, especially as physical as rugby league. Uh, I think it is too much because I think... I think we'd see a better, better quality games if there was if it was just once a week. So, so what would you have Good Friday or the Easter Monday, or would you spread it over the? I I, I, I think over, I think over the weekend. I think you could spread it over the weekend and maximise um, potential on viewing figures on yeah. telly. Um, for example, would that would it also maximise? I mean, just just for for a second, forget viewers. Yeah. And all, and yeah, all yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit, yeah. But, we're in a sport which needs bums on seats. Yeah. They need people going through the gates. Do you, you know, if, if say for example you've got Wigan Saints on Friday and then you've got I don't know Warrington Salford on a, yeah. on, on the Saturday, would you be tempted to go to both games then? Yeah, yeah. Would, would you, would, do you have mates who would go to both? Yeah, games? Uh, I, well, and what I also I think could happen is obviously because it's the the Easter break, you could make the Monday for example. Um, just Championship and League One, so you can encourage fan encourage fans from Super League to attend the local the local sides in uh, League One and Championship. So you could you could have well, you could have Sofa fans attend the yeah. Swinton Rochdale fixture on the Monday. Yeah. Um, you could have Wigan fans go to Levis, Bradford, or 
Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, leave us. That's a traditional game. Well, no, no well, you, pick, you pick a traditional one there. Ooh, yeah, yeah that, great, it... that, that great traditional fix, <laughs> silly, against Bradford. <laughs> Ooh. Well, well <laughs> leave us winners. So you could have Wigan fans go to Lee, Lee End and Warrington fans go to Witness End and something like that. So I, I think you could, you could make the Easter Monday fixture about the Championship and League One club, clubs, get a bit of money in through their turn styles as well, and have Friday, Saturday, Sunday as. Um, the Super League and spread it out so you could have uh, the whole dive, the no the Wigan Saints derby on the Friday yeah. uh, the whole derby on the Saturday afternoon then Wakefield v Cass on the Saturday night uh, so you could have two games one, uh, one kicking off dinner time good Friday one kicking off later in the afternoon good Friday one kicking off dinner time Saturday one kicking off later in the afternoon on uh, Saturday as well seems like a good point at this juncture to, to actually mention the fact that League One are halfway down this route because they're only playing once yeah. over the Easter period they've got a, a full range of fixtures on Good Friday which sees Coventry against London Scholars Keithley against Doncaster North Wales Crusaders against West Wales Raiders so the Welsh Derby is taking yeah. place Oldham against Hunslow, which for me is the big game because of the way that Hunslow's gone, the way Oldham have built into the season so far. And you can't look further than Workington against Whitehaven. Um, big Cumbrian, Cumbrian affair. Always, always a decent yeah. decent game as well between those two. Definitely. Um, what do you reckon for sort of winners? What, is, what stands out for you and of those that I've just sort of uh, said? Personally, I, I like the sounds of the uh, West Wales v, v North Wales Crusade. That that'll be that'll be a good game. But then I don't think you can look past Oldham Hunslet. I think that'll be, as you said, the way the table is shaping up. I think that could be that could be a massive game. And I think that that's the kind of game that could throw up a, a few surprises. You look through that that fixture list. You've got maybe a few games that might be a little one sided. But then you look at that kind of game and it's it's anyone's money. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of a, a lot of points up for grabs. A lot of. Uh, a lot of shot results could could happen in the next few weeks, but I think the way that League One's shaping up this year, every every point matters, as I say. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, I think that you raised some some really good points there. Um, can you indulge me for sort of two or three minutes here? We can try. You've got plenty of reading material anyway. If you if, if it's not your if it's not your bag, uh, but I want to talk amateurs. I want to talk amateur game. That's all Heath Crusaders. They have won the Bala National Cup on Sunday over at South Lee Stadium. They scored two tries in the last eight minutes. They were losing by nineteen points to twelve. Um, they scored two tries last eight minutes. Sean Quinn of Stalwart, who's been playing first team rugby at Thato since he was seventeen, scored both of them. Uh, Jack Jones, the Bala tourist, who I went on tour. Did I mention that I went on tour? Did you? <laughs> um, he scored one of the tries in the first half. Charlie Taylor scored the other. Quinn also landed two goals. But West Aldi had built that 19 points to 12 lead. They scored tries through Scott Spavin, who used to play at Dewsbury, I think. Um, he had a couple of stints with semi professional teams. Jack Arnett and Tom Burke. There was also three goals and a drop goal from Scott Partis, who's a pretty good. Amateur halfback, he's been like really at the hub of everything that westall has been doing for the last few years. But even that fell into insignificance thanks to that strong finish from Thato and those late heroics. Uh, in the Premier Division last week, Egremont at the top of the table at Easter, they beat Underbank Rangers 30 points to nil. Hunslet Club Parkside are on the rise, they had to use all their guile though to overcome Rochdale Mayfield by 31 points to 22. Lee Miners Rangers eventually got away from their visitors to triumph 28 points to 14 over Kells, while Lock Lane claimed the points away at Thornhill Trojans by 32 points to 22. Uh, the vagaries in the amateur game mean that if you've got a National Conference League game on the same weekend as a cup game, that kind of has to take place. So even though West Hull were playing in the Barla National Cup final on the Sunday, <laughs> they had to play on the Saturday as well. Oof. They fought out a 16 all draw with Wathbrow Hornets. So, fair play to. I'll say hats off for them for being able to play do that. Fair play to them for being able to do that. And again, you know, they're uh, similar to that, so we run sort of three open age teams. Westall's got a hell of a lot of players you yeah. know, at their disposal. They, they've provided so many players to the professional ranks and will continue to do so. I think that the infrastructure there is so good. In Division 1, Featherstone Lions held off a spirited Dewsbury Mall Maroons by 26 points to 6. Milford claimed bragging rights in a Leeds derby, defeating Stanley 20 points to 6. Skirla won away at local rivals Might and Warriors by 21 points to 12. Normanton Knights were overcome by the impressive Pilkington Rex 36 22. 
Pilks virtually had it sewn up at half time, 22 0 up. Uh, Wigan St. Pat's had Jamie Bristow to thank for their victory against Saddleworth. They won by 30 points to 26. Bristow scored a hat trick. And York Acorn eased their way to a comfortable success over Ulton Raiders, winning 44 points to 10. In Division 2, we've got league leaders Intros Bridge, who were pushed every inch of the way by fellow promotion chasers West Bowling. That one finished 25 22. I bet that was a storm of a game. East Leeds had a great road win up at Ascombe. They won by 30 points to 16. Sadly, that means the end of Dave Clark as Ascombe boss. Now, I'm thinking, I've heard of Dave Clark before. He both played and coached at, at Barrow. He's also been on the coaching staff at Wigan as well. So, uh, sadly, he's now put himself out of the game. Um, he's took the decision after a poor start for Ascombe, which leaves them sort of rock bottom of that table. Barrow Island, though, things much looking much improved for them. They had a dominant second half, defeating visitors Shawcross Sharks, 46 points to 18. It's pretty close at half-time, 18-12, but Ireland then found the groove and ran away with it. Um, Jack Reed scored 18 points for Crossfields, as they had a brilliant success away at Beverley, winning 26 points to 16 against Scott Taylor's side. While Bradford Dudley Hill just got over the top of clock face miners by 24 points to 22. Wigan St. Jude's, meanwhile, they were too good for Hull Lockers, beating the host 32 points to 22. And if you're just in Jordan's regarding Division yeah. 3, that's it, where I can get excited. Lee East, the top of the field, the two points clear after a 30 points to 18 away win against Ed Storm. Batley Boys are also on the improve as well. They've um, upped their recent record with a 26 16 home win over Millen. Oldham St Anne's had a brilliant result over at Dewsbury Celtic. I've spoke quite, quite highly of Dewsbury Celtic and the way that they've been performing in the early part of the season. I've got to give big raps to Oldham St Anne's. They won 34-6 at Dewsbury Celtic. They absolutely battered them. Battered them. Talking about battering though, Fraser West was the hero as Heworth topped St Anne's efforts with a 72-6 win Four. over the early league leaders in the division. <laughs> Waterhead Warriors. They absolutely tated them. 13 tries they scored. West grabbed a hat trick. Um, there was a good result for Hensingham as well. They picked up their second win of the season, 38 12 at home to Drinklington. Unslick Warriors enjoyed a 34 6 success at Salford City Roosters. And Wollstone Rovers moved to third following a 32 10 home win over Eastmoor Dragons. I believe this was a bit of a feisty affair. There were four yellow cards shown in the, in the clash and a couple of uh, couple of different brawls that went on. So uh, <laughs> it'd be great to get a tape of that, to be honest. I would, I would really enjoy watching that. Um, finally, as far as the Amateur Rugby League is concerned for this episode of the show, the Women's Rugby League Association have their Plate and Challenge Cup final games taking place this Sunday. It's all happening at Featherstone Rovers. Kicking off at 12 is the Plate Cup final. This sees East Leeds take on Keithley Albion. And then at 2, the Challenge Cup final will follow. It's Featherstone Lions, or should they be Lionesses, taking on Oral St James. So you've got a good Yorkshire Lancashire clash in that one. Uh, it's available for getting in there. £5 for adults, £3 for concessions and kids. Good and that's stuff. your amateur roundup. Good stuff. Let's move back to Super League. Uh, we'll just go through a couple of comments. Oh, yeah, then. of course. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, comments. Yeah. Alex Fitzgerald is just going back to uh, what we was uh, speaking about before regarding like Saints' kickers. kickers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says. He's uh, going to put me right. He says, Cook's been nowhere near 75%. Yeah, well, <laughs> basically, a, a consistent goal kicker is one of the few areas Saints could get better with. Uh, Holbrook uh, is giving it to Coot as he's unsure on Richardson in open play. Hmm. I, I would say it's more defensively with Richardson. Yeah, I think, yeah, I I think, think attacking is. wise. Yeah. But it, it depends what he wants. I think, I think, isn't it? Because I mean, it's like if you look at some half-back pairings. I think he prefers Teo Farge just because Farge is just a little bit more structured, isn't he? He's, 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 he's very structured in the way he plays Farge. He, he, he doesn't get... He doesn't, He's not a match winner, is he, like Richardson can be? He's more experienced, though, isn't yeah. he? Because he's been around yeah. the first teams for, for much, much longer. I think, I think he played yeah, exactly. Salford for that. Yeah, first I, th I, th I think he went to Salford when he was 16 <laughs> and, and made his debut not long after that, <laughs> didn't he? Um, he? He was there for That's an experience, time. growing up in Salford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, you listened, have you heard his accent as well? Is it a bit mixed? Is yeah, it, is yeah. Is it a bit Salford? Yeah, yeah. 
He's got, he's got a little bit of salt. He don't like stuff, you know. He don't like getting his tooth knocked out. I've got to visit the dentals. I've got to go to the dentals. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's like Harrison Hansen, isn't it? He, he's a uh, Harrison's Harrison's is great. Actually. Harrison has got a brilliant accent. Uh, Kiwi Wigan. Yeah, Kiwi Wigan. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of, I kind of understand where Alex is coming from when he yeah. says that. Um, Good point. I, I like Richardson an open player. Going forward, not, well, it's, it's not necessarily off, defense. It's, it's more off the cuff as well, and he, yeah, as you said, it, much, depending much, what yeah. kind of rugby he wants to play, you've got Richardson who he does win your matches. He does have that flair about him, but it just is too similar to Lomax though, because you know uh, you've, got, you've got like a bit of a contrast there between but, Farge and Yeah, Lomax but I, I don't, I don't think Lomax is a kicker, is he at all? No. Uh, whereas Richardson has got that, but obviously Richardson's very raw. Uh, got a, a a long way to go, but there is plenty of improvement in him. Uh, he's an exciting prospect, for, that's for sure. Grant Plus, Reed, we can give it. We can give him a good mention and say he's someone from Widnes that he's in Super League. <laughs> yeah, like Richie Marlow, yeah. could have a little, little Widnes pair in there in the yeah, halves. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they could be passing out to Percival. <laughs> uh, Grant Reed says, "What's your opinions on the Charles Cup draw?" Uh, well, we will be coming to that. Okay. So, Grant, we will talk about that in a few minutes' time. Pete Richards also says, "Don't need the Monday game at Easter." So the back in you? Yeah. But I think yeah. that that's not that, that that's not often that happens as well. <laughs> Drew, he's so. making an impression on social media. Yeah, I d- yeah, I, d- I just don't think we do, but. Well, with with the with the Easter period, obviously players and coaches they know that you're going to play three games in seven days. I think for a lot of the big clubs, it's maybe not as much of a concern because you look at the strength in depth a lot of them have got now, where they've got thirty players who can rotate as they please. It's more for if you look at Super League, the likes of a Hulk or a Salford, where they've already got a few injuries, they're down on numbers, and the last things that those coaches, last thing Tim Sheens wants, the last thing Ian Watson wants is a couple more injuries because. Yeah. Pick up two or three injuries over Easter period, and that that could be your season ruined. But they made the decision to run with the size of squads that they had. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Well, that that, that, that comes that, down that, to well, that's something as well. Dynamics, doesn't it? Really? That's something as well that Ian Watson kind of he kind of admitted before the season mm. started. He maybe wanted a bigger squad. I think it's it's maybe not been too much of a, of a hindrance so far. But then you look at the Easter period with the amount of minutes that some of his players are going to be asked to play, and that's where it could come into the reckoning. You only as well need one. One injury in the half backs as well for Salford, and then they're really struggling. They've not really got the strength in depth there. Um, yeah, I, I, I worry for Salford to be honest because if they get a bad injury or two bad injuries over this Easter period to uh, any key positions, then who are they going to bring in? Because and you know, Wakefield going to go out with both both front line half backs missing. I mean. But at least they they've got they've kind of got. It gives a chance 19. to Reynolds, doesn't yeah. it? I suppose. Yeah, they yeah. give a chance to Reynolds. Um, Ham, oh, Ham, still got Hampshire. They, they they're not short, are they? They've... Oh, I wouldn't run them with Hampshire at half back. But well, I don't think he can run. He can't run the game. I think he's a de- very good player. He's he a runs. He runs around like headless chicken. Put, I think. put, put it this way: Wakefield's half back, starting half back pair, and Miller and Bruff are injured. They've got Ryan Hampshire and uh, Ben Reynolds. Ben Reynolds to call upon. If Salford got injuries to Jackson Aces and Rob Lovey, who are they calling upon? Have they even got a backup half back? Well, they'll be, looking, they'll be looking at Woods, wouldn't they? Probably playing yeah. one of the roles because he's a, but even he's a, a hooker. He's a hooker, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he got, got him there, maybe Lussick. Could he go? Could he fill in there? It's well, a, Mark, Mark Flanagan played a, a grand final yeah. at six, didn't he? <laughs> for St. Helens in 2014, I think mm-hmm. it might have been. Something like that. Was that the boring grand final? That was a, <laughs> the, the, the grand final that. We can pepper Saints in, but uh, there was a man left for 78 minutes uh, because Ben Fogg got sent off in the second minute. It was a terrible game, man. Terrible game. Um, oh, yeah, that's when he brutally attacked Lance Ohio, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mike Malloy says, I don't I don't think Richardson has improved from his stint with Lee. Your, your, obvious, your thoughts on this, Dave? Obviously, you watch Lee. Uh, regularly, um, uh, as Richardson third at Lee, has he done well? Has he impressed? Has he not impressed? I initially he didn't impress at all. You know, he was very very slow to settle in. It took him a good two or three games. It was almost like he. Uh, maybe I'm reading it wrong because I don't know Danny personally. Um, I've only spoke with him once anyway in a, a more professional capacity. But it was almost as if he was, he was kind of sulking at being at Lee. That's probably a strong word that you know but he you know he, he was like playing with his head down it's like i'm not too sure whether i won't be here um and then something must have happened and there was a you know a gap between games because he came out and then played an absolute stormer in swinton 
Yeah. Uh, played an absolute storm of the week after, and played really well in his in the third game back, and then he's ended up back at, at St Helens. Whether he's had a word in his ear as well, possibly from I the guys at Lee. I think, yeah, I think, but I also think as well Lee were using him differently because if you think at, at, at Lee, you've got a half back there that controls everything in Martin Rickyard. Mm. Um, for me, him and Woods don't work quite as well together because you want you want ideally a playmaker and a runner. Yeah. Um, someone who can do a bit yeah. off the cuff. So Danny Richardson being paired with, with Martin Ridyard, perfect. With Woods, it doesn't quite work because Woods wants to be that prompter as well. You yeah. know, so it means that there's that sharing of playmaking duties. Yeah, it's very, very similar to Ridyard, isn't it? Yeah, Woods. yeah. Um, um, so, like, and I just get the feeling that if they're expecting him to fulfil the role that Theo Farge is playing at St Helens, I don't think that's Danny Richardson. I don't think you can fully give him a game plan and say, run with this. No, it's, 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 it's not his style of play, but then you, you quite a lot of Saints fans kind of compare him to the half-backs at the bad early in the season. Obviously, yeah. they had that such a good run of games, such a great start to the season, winning, what was it, six, seven games? and they, they, they was, it, was it eight? Was yeah, it, eight, eight, it might have been eight, and before, eight before, before, trot, be before honest, that, yeah. that got ended, and then a lot of fans look at that and think, oh, Richardson, Richardson can't live up to who they had in the halves, but I think you, you look at the, some of the, their half-backs are completely different players, and what you get from Richardson isn't necessarily what you'd expect from a Farge or from a Lomax. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're just different different style of players and <coughs> just in Holbrook obviously he knows, he knows what he wants and if he gives Richardson a game then give him a chance to shine. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, right, I, I'm, I want to stick with Super League. Don't look so shocked. <laughs> Don't look so surprised. Um, Matt Sneed, four kicks and he wins the game for Hull. I know the game was a lot more than just four kicks because I mean that was just end to end, wasn't it, between Hull and Catalan? Yeah, it was. A, it was a good game to watch. I think both both defenses will be pretty disappointed with themselves uh, because there were a few shocking efforts. Could Catalans have won it? A controversial um, decision, wasn't it, near the end of the what game? What do you reckon? Do you yeah. reckon that should have been a try? You know my my opinions are. My opinion is, Dave, on the obstruction rule. I, I think it, the obstruction rule is shocking. Um, I think it, I, I think it should have stopped. Mm. Uh, but I, I wasn't surprised that it it, it was ruled out because it, the obstruction rule is a joke. And they've set the precedent already this year. I think we've seen a couple of obstructions. Yeah. Warrington Wakefield earlier in the season, when I think it was a, a disallowed try for Warrington. Danny Brough being obstructed, but it, it's just it's so minor now. So. You can do so little and then get penalised. That that's what I think a lot of the fans dislike about the rule at the minute. It's very difficult to try and overturn something though, isn't it? When it's already been sent up as a as, yeah. as a no try or as a try, you've got to yeah. the, nine times out of ten now. It's just the same decision, isn't it? Well, well, you, you, Which makes you wonder why they send it up in the first place. If he sort of sent it up as a no try yeah. nine times out of ten, and it'll as, come up as a no try. As well, if they send it up as a no try, you have to have concrete proof that it that they can overturn the decision. And I think. An area as, as murky as obstruction, I think that there's never. I, I don't think there'd be a referee who'd turn round and look at a decision and say, right, the referee's got that totally wrong. Because it's a subjective thing, isn't it? What mm. what I think about an obstruction might not be what you think might not be what you think, Dave. And I think that that's the issue with the rule at the minute. Do we use dummy runners too much in rugby league these days? Is there another discussion regarding that? Because if there's a lot of tries getting disallowed, well, that, 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 as well, no, I, I, think, think, I, think, the, the, I think dummy runners just need to learn how to go through the defensive line. Yeah. Because they do, a lot, a lot don't, but then a lot. They stop in the line, through, don't they? And then they just stop there. It's like carry on going. In, instead of yeah. going that extra two or three yards for to to get through the defensive line, they just stay there. And then if the ball goes out wide, they, they'll just go. Drew, you've obviously, you've obviously never watched Ellen Hamlin. And, 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 and then the fullback just all, all, the, all the fullback has to do is just run in, into his arm and, go, and fall down, backwards yeah. or drag himself like that. So when it goes when it goes to to the big screen, it's like oh he's on short to him. He can't get a, can't get across him. They've never watched Ellery Hamley, have they? Because that's all he used to do. Is that he just used to dash in front of play yeah. and then lag back, waiting for the pass inside, <laughs> and away you go to the post. Sean Edwards was a pass master at that mm-hmm. as well. To be honest, off white chucking the thing and running ahead and getting the ball back. Mm-hmm. We wonder you wonder how many times as well some of these players will will have a try disallowed before they realise that they, they need to change the style of play. And, there's been I've heard I've seen a couple of things on Twitter this week about um, some some fans saying that maybe dummy runners might not might not be around in a few years maybe they'll, they'll just stop altogether and it will just be but no one running through the line but if you don't have dummy runners 
where will everyone go? Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you can't. You can't. It's very, very difficult to have thirteen players going all in the, in the in a diagonal line just to get a play on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think you've got to have dummy runners to open gaps in defences. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think. Uh, you, if you had no dummy runners, I don't think there'd be many ways you could get through defence. That, that's the thing as well, and you, as well you look at... Like a game of table football there. <laughs> yeah. just, everyone, everyone just coming together and, and not being able to... Well, I know we've got, we got virtually table football at the side here. Yeah. Yeah. Sabuti or rugby, Dave, that's what it is. Sabuti <laughs> or rugby. Right, OK. So are we going to be doing no tries or scored in future editions or something? Is this a, like is that the idea of it? That's tactics. Tactics. The tactics table. Yeah, tactic. Ta try and say that. Yeah, top top. <laughs> tactic table. <laughs> Tic tac table. <laughs> um, yeah, but then I know we've spoken about Steve a couple of times, but he wins it with four kicks, doesn't he? Mm. Basically, you know. He, does. So he has the the penalty. Yeah. Then the restart. Or, or no, the restart to draw the penalty in the first place. Yeah. Which. Mr. Iceman, isn't he? Yeah. He and, is. and then. Good. Put, kick put, off to get the ball back. Yeah, that, 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 that's one of the time. things I, I really like about Snape as a player. It's, it's not it's not it's not the flashiest. He doesn't he doesn't do off the cuff things that often. But with someone like Albert Kelly next to you, you don't really need to. But I think what he's got is that game management, that awareness, and that composure at the times when he needs it. And I think if if he didn't have that composure, then those goals and point wins might not have happened. And then we could see Hull a lot further down the table than they are currently. Uh, and again, I put golden point specialists because they're the team that knows how to do it, don't they? Yeah, once you've once you've got a couple, that'll that that'll be in their minds now. And for teams who are coming up against them as well, they'll they'll look at Hull and think, right, they've had two golden points, they've won twice. So and you know, James, I was half expecting you to say something that was on the tip of my tongue there: muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Remember how to do it exactly. And what it, it'll be become kind of a rhythm for them, and it's something that they've it's something that. If they know how to do it, then next time it comes up, they'll, they'll be confident in themselves as well. They'll be, they'll be, they'll, they'll know how to do it, and they'll, they'll have that ability to do it in those pressure circumstances. One one thing I do want to say about the Catalan v Hull game: one player on the Catalan team who I thought really stood out, Sam Cassiano. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He, I think he had his, he had his best game by a country mile for Catalan. Because he was both a little bit critical of his early efforts. Yeah, he, he, made, he maybe didn't his first couple of games. Yeah, he maybe didn't didn't live up to what what I thought he would do straight away. I, I expected someone of his quality to maybe hit the ground running. I think he still needs to get a bit fitter. He does. He yeah, def definitely needs to get a bit fitter. But I think his stats showed this week that he had a much better game. I think I think he's taken him maybe a couple of games to get acclimatized, and I think. The more he gets that run in the team, the fitter he'll become, mm. and I think I think he'll, he'll be a really good acquisition. To be fair, he is one of these guys. He's just so big. Even if he falls over, he makes five meters. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's, he's massive, and he came up with that nice off wall for Whitley's disallowed try, didn't he? He did. Um, right. I want to talk Huddersfield because Huddersfield defeated Castleford at the weekend, mm. twenty points to eighteen. Hat trick from Alex Mower. Was this an unexpected result? And have Huddersfield turned around their season again. <sighs> so, so it's all about consistency, isn't it? I think it was a very, it was a very good result. You, you get a bit frustrated how they can, how they can win a few, lose a few. Obviously, that's the nature of the sport. But I think they started they, very poorly this they, season. They though, did. It's like cause I remember I saw them earlier in the season, and when when I was watching them with my friends, and I thought, I thought they they could be they could be relegation candidates because they, they just weren't clicking, especially in the halves you had. Lee Gaskell, you had Matty Frawley, you weren't, weren't playing at all well. And then you, you fast forward to this game against Castleford, I think Frawley got an assist and Gaskell did as well. They both played very well. I think Gaskell was actually the assist maker for the first try, broke the line expertly. I think I think sometimes with a half-back pairing, it does take a while for them to get, get acclimatised. But I think now now that they're starting to become a bit more familiar with each other, I think it's starting to click into game. You're not you're not looking stars up there, are you, Drew? No, no, no. Um, I was <laughs> <laughs> any comments? Sorry, I caught you out. <laughs> no, I was, I, was, I was looking at comments to uh, Dev, but I just feel that I don't think they've turned the season around. Um, but I also don't think they can mess it up. It's it, it's so strange. You just can't predict Huddersfield at the minute. They can get forty points put past them. Yeah. Uh, by by say a, a whole KR, uh, and then. Come up with a performance like that against Castleford. Think it's an out. They're an outside tip for the top the, five. I just think that's no, a bit too far. No, 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 no. Does this go no down as way. one that gets away from Castleford then? Mm. Should they have done a lot? Well, they they can't really afford to lose well, those games if they have those ambitions. They've lost a couple of games now on the spin, haven't they? Mm. Um, they might be going through a little bit of a rough rough patch themselves. I think it's 
We should actually like mention Castleford's injuries because they've been doing it tough recently, and yeah. uh, a lot of people have been going on about right, Wiggins' injuries and um, all FC's injuries and all Car's injuries, but no one's really mentioned what Castleford, Castleford have been going through, and uh, uh, they've been struggling. Uh, obviously, they've signed Blur from the NRL. Good yeah, well. very strong signing. From uh, tell us a little bit about him. Obviously, it, as, a, a, as a non NL watcher, <laughs> he's a centre. Uh, he's not. He's not a flashy player, uh, but he'll do a very, very solid job. So he's, he's not like. Uh, Is he a kind of Jake Webster more? Yeah, like Jake Webster type centre. I'd, I'd, I'd say where he's, he's not like a Kevin Nagama, where he's, he's going to probably win matches for Saints on his own. Um, but if he, if he performs well, it Castleford be, can become a very, very strong on the edges. Um, but going back, just going back to to Woodersfield, it's it's so hard to predict how they're gonna they're gonna be playing. I don't. They'll be nowhere near the top five. Nowhere near it. They'll they'll, they'll remain a bottom four side. Is that Drew Stapple um, this week? No, no chance of top five for Huddersfield. Yeah, the, the, in fact, you've you've got a really good relationship with Huddersfield fans. Well, they're yeah, gonna be having a lot of go at you. Here, but you? I, 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 I'll, 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 I'll be again. I'll be very surprised, Dave, if they if they finish any higher than the bottom four. Okay. Um, but Daryl McIntosh as well uh, signing a new deal uh, very positive news for the Giants I, I think look, he's a cracking player yeah I, I like player. watching him uh, a, g- a big fan of his uh, he started kicking goals as well hasn't he mm-hmm. uh, so could yes. he be an important goal kicker for the future <laughs> um, we'll soon see about that but uh, a, a strong performance Alex Miller as well superb outstanding player probably one of the more underrated back rows in Super League as well. He's kind of been a bit of a slow burn, yeah. hasn't he? He was, a, he was very good in the Championship when he was playing for Bradford um, and deserves this shot mm. in Super League. And he's, he's having an extended run, isn't he? But he, you're right, he's one of those guys that's kind of been unheralded. Yeah. I mean, they sign a lot of players from Bradford, don't they, Huddersfield? To be a, a, little bit, a little bit like um, Ollie Roberts for me. Uh, he's, he's a good player. He, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, but he's been a slow burner as well. Yeah. He's, he's been around for quite a... A couple of years now. Yeah, he's about twenty four now. Yeah, isn't he? yeah. Um, but I think they they've got a good back row pair in them. Uh, Huddersfield for for in future years. Mm. Okay, let's move us on. I know we've already talked a little bit about it, but you can't go anywhere without mentioning St Helens and Warrington. You know, um, you sounded so deflated then, James. So I'm going to start with you because you you, you was the one that puffed your cheeks then. I know we're going to revisit that night again. I just, I uh, what, what were your thoughts? I mean, you know, I thought St Helens were, were particularly clinical in the game. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's the main thing you have to take away from it. I think I think that was a real statement of intent by St Helens to the rest of the league. They were almost kind of saying, right, Warrington have been up there with us, but this is what we can do to them when we're on form. Saints by, by weren't by any means at their at their best, he played very well, did some good rugby. That I have to say there were some poor efforts in defence from Warrington, especially in that in that second half when you could see they'd been worked a bit, they got a little bit tired. But I, th- I think I think the big the killer for, for Warrington was that first half, uh, Mike Cooper getting simbined and I think in that period St. Helens got two tries, it maybe took them took it a bit out of the reach for Warrington. Yeah, I I, I was very disappointed with the pack for Warrington, to be honest. Yeah, that that, um, that was one. Of, you know, if you if you take Chris Hill's stats out of that starting set yeah. of six forwards, the rest of them sort of paled into insignificance. Yeah, really, well, what, one in comparison. One thing that was quite quite interesting as well with Warrington and their team at the weekend. Obviously, Saints are, Saints are a big a big side, but you you look at you look at the forwards that they had on the bench. You had Lama Tarzi, who didn't come on until the last twenty minutes. Matt Davies didn't come on until the last twenty minutes. So that. A lot of their forwards were having to do big minutes, and that's something that, something that's quite quite interesting, Mike. What Mike. What do you think Sitalaki Akola needs to do to, to get a game at Warrington? I don't know. If I was, I don't think he can get one. I think he needs to move. If, if I was him, I'd be I'd be banging on Steve Price's door saying, "What what do we need to do to get a game?" Because he's, I saw him a couple of times in pre season, and he was a he was a big player. He's, he's lost a lot of weight. He's put a lot of muscle on, and I think he's the, he's the kind of forward Warrington are maybe missing at the minute. You're not gonna. You're not going to get that fierce and running that powerful drives forward from a, a Lama Tazi, i.e. you maybe you, you need someone a lot bigger than him. No disrespect to Tazi, he's been he's obviously a favourite of Steve Price. He's, he's played a lot of minutes this year, but I think the different players, and I think at the minute Akua was someone who they maybe need a little bit more. How good let, let's let's switch tails a little bit. How good is that front row of St. Helens? I mean, they are absolutely phenomenal, aren't they? Uh, has there been a better front row in Super League? The, the this sounds like one of those Twitter things where it's <laughs> usually 
That's the bit of better combination. <laughs> Is it as though? A better front three than Alex Wormsley, James Robert, and Is that what we're calling them nowadays? Front three? Yeah. A football fan, area. Yeah. yeah. Getting new formations. Who <laughs> <laughs> will be left wing back? <laughs> we're having two full backs. <laughs> I I I just, I just, I I'm blown away by Saints' pack. Um, it's just so consistent. Morgan um, Knowles is so underrated. Morgan Knowles, he he's got to be with it in with the show to that making that great Britain score for I, me. I've got to be honest though, it's one of his quieter games. Yeah, yeah. Actually, look yeah. at his stats. I think he was down to just the bur thirty tackles and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's a lot in itself as well, isn't it? That's, that's what Joseph you're... Joseph Paolo. Yeah. Uh, he plays from underrated role, yeah, right, yeah. He? going under the radar at Saints at the minute, but he yeah. does a job when he enters the field. Because he's a bit of a ball player as well, isn't it? Uh, so he'll, he'll sometimes act as like a third receiver. Yeah. Um, so he's he's been quality for, for Saints since he's come in. Even like Louis McCann, he's got I was going to say, yeah, he's been very good. You think, he's I got think, a new lease of life as this super yeah. sub, hasn't he? He has, yeah. And I think do you welcome, welcome a daughter into the world mm. earlier. Early in the early hours of the game day, and then he then he goes and turns into performance like that. Scores a try, which was a very good finish. It took took a bit of finishing, but he, he did very well. And then I think he just let let a lot of emotion out through that ball into the Warrington crowd. He uh, he know he knows how to wind up fans. But if if you had him, if you were a Saint Ellen's fan, and that's the kind of thing you want to see. You want to see some passion. And I think he brings that in abundance. Talking about quality and quality finishes. What about Regan Grace? What what a storming finish that was. Very good. He it is. Is we we see Regan Grace produce a finish like this, don't we? Every every couple of games, he, he, he's quite he's quality, and I, I I could just watch him do hundred meters all day. Yeah, <laughs> and then you had Lyon being a dirty git and dropping on, yeah. which he's been subsequently banned for. Well, I think yeah. he was very lucky for it to just be one one game ban as well, because I think I think he was quite lucky not to to well to stay on the field at the time. Yeah, to definitely. Be, to be honest, I was surprised that there wasn't as much as a, a reaction. Because yeah. something similar happened in that Wigan and Warrington game, hadn't it, a few years yeah. ago, and everything kicked off. Yeah, well, don't, I don't think Regan Grace is the kind of player who, who'd maybe cause a fuss fight. He, he rightly should have because yeah, he was, just jumped up and celebrated, didn't he? Was, I reckon. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he gets aggravated much, does he, Regan Grace? Right. I think he's quite. He keeps cool himself. To, level yeah, manager. he keeps himself to himself. Uh, but it was probably the the euphoria kind of thing of, of mm. scoring that try at such an important moment. Uh, I don't think he was really bothered about. No, and then ob- obviously, obviously that means for Warrington now going into their game tomorrow against Salford, you've got Bryson Goodman probably returning back on the wing, which will be which will be interesting. I think he's played there a couple of times for Warrington, but you look. He's more in as a centre, isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's more. A centre, and there's a bit there's a bit of a difference in the job that you've got to do defensively, yeah. and you know kick returns and stuff like and that's that. That's the thing. Well. But then they they've not really unless they're, they're going down to the under 19s and having a look there. They've not really got any other wingers in Warrington that Warrington don't do that, <laughs> Very funny. No, they release some another player, sign them, mm. don't they? Well, they're thinking of Taylor Prello. He's ended up at yeah, uh, is it Keith? Keith now, isn't, isn't he? Yeah. He was, he was quite a, quite an interesting character, Taylor Prell. Yeah. There was a bit of fanfare about him coming in and then well, yeah, he, he never come, got he didn't, he didn't come through the ranks though, did he? No. He bought him from Yorkshire County, you were it. But yeah, that seems to be, I think, the Warrington, the Warrington blueprint. They'll buy, buy, the young players <laughs> from, buy the young players from the other club, Louis Johnson as well. And then and then send them out on loan though, because I mean, they've just sent a lot out, out on loan to Dewsbury as well, which suggests at least, that... At least, uh, uh, Rob Robson, Robson, yeah. It suggests that either they're not getting what they want with this dual registration partnership they've got with Rochdale, or Rochdale don't want the players well, yeah, being offered because Pat, Pat Moran has joined Sheffield Eagles as well right, yeah, on yeah. a month's loan um, and there's a couple of others that are in the offing of sort of a move yeah but, Ma- well obviously Matt Davis started the season uh, at Rochdale but then obviously went on loan back to London for a month and obviously he's played a couple of games for Warrington now um, where's Libby Johnson at now? Is he, is he back at Warrington? Johnson, yeah, he's Johnson, back at Warrington. Yeah, now. He went over to witness. Yeah, yeah, only got ended up because. But obviously, you, you would have thought he, he possibly would have been playing for, for Rochdale as well. Yeah. Uh, because it's against tougher opposition. So it suggests that there's something not quite team. working mm-hmm. right for yeah. for Warrington or for Rochdale. You know, because let's be honest, Rochdale might be looking at the players being offered. I mean, we've actually got 
what we consider better players in our squad anyway. Yeah, possibly that yeah, might you be. Never know. I might well think. And I think with with Louis Johnson as well, I I can see him going out and learn again at some point. I think. I think, I think, yeah, I think he needs to, to the because he's, yeah, he's, he need, I think he needs to because he's he's at that level, isn't he? Where he needs to be he's, 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 yeah. yeah, it where he'll be far too good for the under nineteen league, but obviously he's not quite at that suit. Super League level every single week, yeah. so it, it, it definitely needs to to go out on loan for me just to to progress a little. I think I think playing a Championship because he's he's not the biggest yet, is it? Is it? Uh, so I think by playing in the Championship, he can toughen up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, maybe put on a bit of size as well in doing so. Uh, he's but, quite a tall guy as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's, he's going to be a, a top top quality forward. Definitely. Well, James, we've had you squirming, having to describe. <laughs> Uh, oh. Warrington getting beat against St Helens. Uh, Drew, what happened at uh, <laughs> what happened at Wakefield, mate? Oh, well, uh, typical Wigan in 2019, wasn't it, Dave? Uh, poor performance, didn't offer much at times. The the left edge did okay, uh, but obviously Joe Burgess getting a hat trick for Wigan. Why do you jump straight in on the whole Wigan thing? You know, we should be we should be trumpeting from the roof. The fact that Wakefield are now regularly taking these big sides to close finishes yeah. and uh, winning a few as well. Yeah, but they need to start proving it though, Dave, because they, they've lost a couple of these big games so far this season. But they beat Wigan. So what you're saying is that Wigan's not a big game for them. Well, well <laughs> we're, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to more bottom five at the moment than top five, aren't they? Um, but yeah, I, th- I think they need to just prove it a little bit more, Dave, to, to get that status yet because uh, I think they've lost to... Have they lost to Cass? Yeah. Uh, obviously, they've lost to Warrington and Saints as well this season, I think. Um, so they, they well, they're obviously, playing Cass, aren't they? Yeah, they, they, need yeah. To, they need to start um, winning these bigger games uh, if they are to... To get anywhere near silverware in that top and, five spot, and it'll be interesting as well to see how they fare now without the halfbacks. How how the, the two guys who are going to come yeah. in, how they how they link up, how quickly they can gel. Because we know that a halfback pairing takes a oh, lot of time. Yeah. Even when even when they played all season, we've said it already about Frawley and Gaskell at Huddersfield. So it's whether whether they can hit the ground and keep that keep that smoothness in the play, but quickly enough really. Uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of glad that Ben Reynolds is getting his chance though. Yeah. To be fair, because. It's a good player, Ben. Yeah, I've watched, yeah. It. I've watched him quite a few times at, at Lee. Uh, a solid player at Championship level, uh, an impressive player at Championship level. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how he adjusts to that uh, next level in, in Super League with Wakefield, obviously. Well, he had a regular season, he had a regular spot at, at Lee in yeah, Super League. Yeah. I think he played yeah, yeah. some like 22 games. Yeah, so, season, um, so. It's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, obviously, he's playing with the right Ryan Hampshire at Lee as well, who will probably partner in the halves. Gives him a little um, bit of advantage, doesn't it? For, for Wakefield on well on Thursday night so it's going to be interesting to see how they go on it's going to be interesting to see how they get the forwards around the park etc et um, but yeah I, I, I think I watched an interview before and Dave Fafita has been at uh, Wakefield since 2016 and never beat him there's only two players in that Wakefield team who would beat Cass you know what I mean? So th- this is what I'm talking about about these big games. They need to they need to start showing what they can do. There's no doubting that they can win these big games because they, they do they do beat one of the bigger teams every so often, but they don't do it enough for me. And that's okay. what they need to do yeah. to, to get that top five spot. Um, right, let's get back on a subject that you know plenty about. Uh, Wigan. <laughs> Finally, Edwards has come out and said, you know Hooray! what, I'm stopping hip, hip, in rugby hooray, union. Hip, hip, hooray. I'm just glad it's all over now, Dave. So they can, they can look forward now, can't they? Yeah, they can. Do we expect an upturn in form now? Do you think this has been hanging over the club for the last few weeks? Well, we might not expect an upturn in form on Good Friday against League League. <laughs> uh, but, but maybe start on Easter Monday or against, uh, against Salford. Um, they can just look ahead. Everyone, I think everyone knew... It, since since this fir- very first interview came out where he said he hadn't signed a deal, I think everyone kind of knew deep down that there's no way of him coming. It um, weren't a cynical plight to sell more season tickets at the time, was it? I, was it? I've, I've not a clue. Was it? Was it just be playing daft? Be I, I'm not a clue. It's it's, it's frazzled my brain. I tell you, over the last 
month or two. It's, it's, uh, this, I'm just glad that it's been, it's kind of been resolved. It's been decided that, it, well, it's not been decided. He's decided. He's, he's yeah. decided that he he's, cabs, yeah, he's decided that he, um, he's got a better offer in union. No, no one can, no one can say like, if, he, if he's doubled his wage or whatever, he, he was going to get at Wigan. Or even if they, they discuss wages, we might not, they might not really discuss wages. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you there. We'll, we'll discuss wages when you next come down. That's what it probably uh, But we don't, we don't, we don't. If he's double his wages, then fair enough. Uh, no one can complain about that. But what I don't like is how he's, how he's gone about his business. What do you reckon? How do you think that Edwards has handled himself in this? Has he has he just sort of like really goes, crapped on rugby league from a big height? Well, he has he crapped on Wigan from a big height? He goes, he, well, he goes, he goes on about saying stuff like he's representing rugby league and rugby union and uh, Wigan will always be his own and uh, he loves the Wigan people, they've always treated him well. Uh, Wigan, won't, it, Wigan I, won't let him back in the future, I don't think. If, if, if he came back in a few years and said... So no. I want to come back to Wigan. They'll, they'll just they'll just look at this situation and say, I, if you love yeah. the club that much, then you you basically crapped all over us and you you've you've disrespected yeah. the town. I'll come at this from a slightly different angle. I think he's looked at this job that he's now ahead at Wigan and thinks I can't win trophies with that squad because there's an overhaul that needs to be done at Wigan, in my opinion. Possible. There's lads which are getting towards the back end of the career. Are the lads that are coming up good enough to, to take the spot? Well, I think, the, the, I think quite a lot of them will come good in time. I think that's the thing that we, we know about Wigan, what they're very good at. Really but will Wigan, the academy. will they give them time? You know, because I, I, I mean, I, 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 Wigan's one of those places. It's a, you know, it's, it's a powder keg club, really, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to be performing. Well, it depends. If you don't get in, you're out the door. It depends how much, how much money they get um, in the off-season to spend, because if they've not got the biggest budget to go out and spend money on five, six different players who they need... Maybe it's a case of needs must that they have to bring the young guys through. I, I think that a club like Wigan, that they're, they're good at bringing young players through. And I think I do think in time the young players will will be up to that standard. But I think they maybe maybe need a bit more experience, a few more games under the belt, and a bit maybe some them go out on loan just to give them a d- different flavour. Because obviously a lot of them have been thrust straight into the yeah. Super League spotlight. Well, you've got like a Sammy Kabula who's now over at Dewsbury. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tom Field really well. Mm. Yeah, he's up at Workington into Cal. Yeah. Um, You've got this I'm, I'm, London I'm, scholars as well. So, <laughs> yeah, we've it's Joe Brown and James Barron have just been loaned to uh, London scholars. But then you, you, you know, can I just pull you up on something? Because you said about you know Joe Brown didn't we can sign him from Bradford? Yeah. So is that not the same as Warrington going sign yeah, yeah. some of the yeah, players? Yeah, it is. Okay. But if you, if you just wanted to get you to admit <laughs> that, you know, because you can't. Can't have it all, Wade. Yeah, but if you look in, in Super League, the, the, the amount of players that have come through Wigan's Academy in Super League. Oh, yeah, Wigan, is Wigan, and, unbelievable. Wigan and Leeds have built Super League. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. St. Helens down. Yeah. St. Helens have got this regular weather making yeah. players. As well. but, um, but, yeah, um, I've been imp- impressed with Morgan Smithy since he's debuted. He's, he's kept his place in the team. Since Halifax he's lad. Halifax lad. Um, came from Siddle. Um, and Oli Partington. Oli Partington has really stepped up the season. I think he made his debut last year. Uh, I don't think it would be the year before. I think it was in 2018. He played a few um, games in Scotland last year as well. Yeah, he did. Uh, and he's put, <laughs> he played a few games at Swinton as well earlier this year. Uh, I think it was it was against Lee, wasn't it? In Got yourself Simbin. Simbin after 30 seconds after a scrap with Luke Adamson, were it? Or Tom <laughs> Adamson, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, he had to go at Lee. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, they had a do, but... I've been impressed with the youngsters this season. They, they, they've done all right um, for Wigan. So obviously the, the results aren't showing. So, but but, but I, I'll be honest here. I think that Edwards has looked at this and gone, I can't get them winning trophies with that squad. Mm, possible. Um, you know, because he's basically, I, I, I he's basically think... admitted, hasn't it? I'm not experienced enough as a rugby league coach to take Wigan on in its current guise, its current form. Yeah. But uh, the, fact, I, the fact that he's turned them down now, I think that means that he's turned them down in the future because he. Wigan, Wigan as a fan base, the the proud a proud club, proud supporters, and I think when when someone's turned the back on them like that in in a manner that's been so well publicised, I don't think. I, I just I just I just think he's, he's had a better offer in Union, and uh, yeah. he's, he's just decided to to jib Wigan off and, and go in Union uh, and stay in Union. Uh, I don't think he's he might have looked at the team, but I think he's he's the type of guy who relishes a challenge. Mm. He's got that attitude of of Sean Wayne where. Uh, he wants he wants to to prove people wrong kind of thing, but he stayed in Union. I th- I just think he's got a better offer in Union, a far better offer in Union than, than what he, he would have got anywhere in rugby league or at uh, yeah. Wigan. In fact, uh, he stayed in Union, and I think 
Adrian Lamb will get the job beyond uh, beyond this season. Uh, Andrew, I know he's a, a massive Wigan fan. He says, "Keep faith in the youngsters at Wigan." That's what I said. Agreed. I've uh, had some I, uh, amazing times yeah. watching them come through over the years. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to see. Uh, I think Sean Wayne mentioned it uh, a couple of times. Well, this is um, why you go on I'd, about I'd, youngsters I'd, so yeah. much, isn't it? Drew? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see um, Wigan win a grand final with seventeen academy products. <laughs> right, I will. Let's move us on. Easter fixtures. Hey. Woo! Woo! Uh, where did that come? Prediction time. If you want. Oh, go on, man. If you want. Yeah. Easter. Can't be a bit of chocolate. Easter, Easter, a bit of chocolate. Hey, hey, don't, don't short rapper. He's, we're not sponsored. Okay. <laughs> right, show on the back. Why? Well, so, it looks like an only rapper, that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, this Thursday, today, if we can ever finish the show, Castleford against <laughs> Wakefield on Sky TV. Uh, uh, I'm going with Cast to Mount's back. And I'm going to go with Wakefield. 7.45 kick-off. Um, Wakefield to win. Yeah. yeah. Uh, London against Catalans. Catalans. I think London. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Going London as well. I think we've shared the same script here. Yeah, just same share, can, same script. You can see, you can see what I've written. That's what it is. Good Friday, Hull against Hull Kingston Rovers. That's your oh, TV game. Hull FC. Yeah. Hull FC. Hull FC agreed. Hull FC. There we go. We're in agreement on something for once. Six. <laughs> Close one. Definitely. Leeds against Huddersfield. It'll be a case of who wants to lose it more in that one, yeah. won't it? Three o'clock kick off them. Oh, I'll go with Leeds. It's, it's, <laughs> there's not going to be much in it that will be a diabolical game to watch that how yeah. do you know <laughs> I just know Dave you got your crystal balls eh? golden balls man yeah, yeah. golden balls back. you got the golden ball <laughs> no you're not the crystal ball uh, right okay um, you know what I'm going to go Huddersfield oh, yeah see I, I, I'd yeah. go with Drew I think, I think Leeds will probably just have just have enough especially after after the, the cup performance I think be interesting to see if he, if he keeps face with a few of them. Obviously, it wasn't as high quality an opposition as you're facing Super League going up against Workington. But I think, do you, do you think he might might stick with a few of those guys who played? Hang on, hang on. You've just got him completely wiped out Workington Town, though, with that Yeah, but in, in comparison to Huddersfield, they're, they're not. The, the, they're not at the same level. Yeah, the two the two leagues below, obviously, it's it's going to be a, a step up in quality. So it'll be interesting to see if he sticks with some of those players. Yeah. I think, uh, is it. Owen Troughton has kept his place in the squad from last week. Uh, he was on loan at Dewsbury yeah, recently yeah, as well. Yeah. In fact, Dewsbury have a lot of loan players yeah, this season. Yeah, they have. Um, Warrington against Salford. Oh, there's only one one way this is going for me. Warrington, Salford. Warrington, <laughs> Warrington to bounce back from last week's uh, shocking defeat at St. Helens and mm. uh, they'll put a big score on Salford, I think. Yeah, there's only one performance or one, one battle that we want to see on that day and I think it comes at half-time. The wire flyer, Marwan Kukash, that'll be what the fans are flocking in for. Hang on, hang on. I hope Marwan doesn't actually. I hope he can complete running the length of the field. I know. Yeah, yeah it'll be interesting to see. I think that, that's got a few fans on the seat. Do you think he'll try and uncover the wire flyer? I think he'll try and trip him up. Right. He'll have to do yeah. it by unfair yeah, means. Taking that mask off. <laughs> so, I, I, I tell you, so you really, you don't give a stuff about the game. You just want to oh, see no, the game. I'll tell you then. Warrington's marketing, it brings people in. Yeah. You can get rid of your marketing for that one. Salford all the way. Come on, the boys. <laughs> Work up there. Uh, <laughs> Wigan against St. Helens. That's your TV diary from three. Saints. St. Helens, yeah. Oh, we said that through gritted teeth. <laughs> Saints. Saints by plenty. <laughs> <laughs> It'll walk off in a minute. <laughs> can tell they start the sulk the sulks already start bottom lips coming out 76 so <laughs> I've reminded him I've reminded him uh, Monday Easter Monday we've got a whole a raft of fixtures once again yeah, Catalans yeah. against Cassidy TV game 5 o'clock kick off on that uh, one ooh, Catalan Cata- Catalan Catalan, yeah. Catalan yeah. this could be tasty um, I'll go with the Dragons yeah Catalan uh, I, I think I think that game will, and it's three Catalans. I, I think that game will will heavily depend on how the uh, the Thursday and uh, Good Friday fixtures go. Though. I'm going for a Definitely. good weekend for Huddersfield in the next one because they're up against London. It's over at the wherever the stadium's called these days. The John Smiths. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, I'll go with Huddersfield on that one. Yeah. Oh, I, I go London. Oh, oh yeah. you're predicting two London wins. I, I think this could be. If you look look at the games they're playing, I think if they can pick up two wins now in the grand scheme of their season, this this weekend could be massive for them. Oh, they pick up two wins and, and, and yeah, and Salford get a win against yeah. Wigan as well. All of, all of a sudden, the table a few, few the table ago, has turned. I say all the people people were saying a few weeks ago, Wigan and Leeds would be down there. London get a few wins. Um, yeah, well, let's go there then. Salford against Wigan. I know I think you, you've already said, haven't you, regarding... Yeah, I think, I think, I think Wigan... Wigan back on the arse. Yeah. It's, 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 I think Wigan won quite com- comfortably, didn't they, at Salford? Well, I think it was only about a month ago, to be yeah. honest. Um, I think it'll be the same again. Yeah, yeah. agreed. I, think, I, I do think Wigan, Wigan probably will have a bit too much fall, especially the fact that Salford won't be able to rotate their squad as much as maybe other teams might. Oh, yeah, so- Salford's team will be battered, won't it? Yeah. They won't have anyone bring in. They don't have about what three three players they could they can rest. If that, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna pa- I'm gonna carry on tipping Salford. I'm just gonna do it just in spite of Drew's face. <laughs> just game. approval on the sofa. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, Hulkings and Rovers against Warrington. Warrington. Yeah, I think I think Warrington, but I think it'll be a close game. I think Hulkar and home soil is always going to be difficult, but I think yeah, Warrington by. Ten. I, I can't see Warrington. That was like a, that was like a prime minister speaking, that wasn't it? <laughs> Sitting on fence, but just giving their opinion slightly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saint Helens against Hull. Saint Helens at home in this one. Saint Helens. Saints. I, I don't. I, I don't think I'll back against Saints this season at all. No. To be honest. Uh, Wakefield against Leeds. Here's the chance. Wakefield. The chance. It's got to be Wakefield. Yeah, Wakefield. I can't see Wakefield at all. I've gone completely against tipping. This, 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 this start of the year that I've had. And start this will be um, another game that will be. I think will ride heavily on the fixture before and the, the, the play. I think it, it could go one or two ways for Wakefield, couldn't it? Without yeah. without the half back pairing, uh, Reynolds and uh, Hampshire could completely rip it up and impress and have a good weekend, or or it could just not click and uh, it'll be. Leeds is uh, yeah. win, but I think I'll go and wait for you. Two rounds of fixtures in the championship as well. Good Friday sees Barrow against Toronto. Barrow at home. Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. Sadly, Toronto. <laughs> uh, Dewsbury against Batley. What oh. a storm. This is 7 o'clock kickoff on Good Friday. Yeah. Uh... Ooh, it's a tough one, this. There's not much separating the sides, is there? It's at Dewsbury if that helps. I'll go with Dewsbury then. I, I, I'll play Devils Africa, I'll go Batley. I'll go with Jews, because Bat- Batley have been very inconsistent, haven't they, so far? So far. Yeah. Obviously, they, be, they, they had a good result against Witness a couple of weeks ago, then obviously they've lost in the Challenge Cup. I think they'll be smarting from that, so I'm going Batley. Yeah. Uh, Featherstone against York is your Our League presentation at 6 pm on Good Friday. This is, a, this is a close one, but uh, every game's close in the championship, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'll go with. Oh. I, I'm Featherstone have just signed Dane Chisholm on loan from Bradford. They have, yeah, um, yeah. Is he fit? Is he yeah, I think he's, fit, uh, yeah, I think he's fit. I think he's he, had a few niggling injuries. I think, I think, I think, I think he's Bradford. played uh, one or two reserve games for, for Bradford since he came back. Yeah. I'll go Sorry with. Playing. How many halfbacks do they want at Featherstone? I'll go with, I'll go with York. Okay. Yeah, I'll go York as well. I'll go Featherstone. Dane Chisholm to get the games directed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Halifax Bradford, what a storm that could be. be a, 3 pm over at Shea. Be a cracker that, won't it? I think that. I'll go with Bradford. I go, I go, I go Halifax. Home go advantage, Halifax. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. home advantage. Sheffield against Toulouse in Sheffield. Sheffield. Uh, Oh. Sheffield, I've got to go with my original. You sounded like you were getting to rest. Yeah. <laughs> Sheffield too. Uh, I've got to go with the uh, first choice, even though if Ben Shepherd um, on tipping point always says <laughs> you're not allowed to change from your first choice, mm. I've got to stick with my first choice. How have you managed to get a tipping point? I was just thinking that. Ben, ben Shepherd coming to Love Billy Weekly. I, don't know, bring... I, was, I was thinking of game shows and a watch. You were bringing Tip, Bob Olness in next, wasn't you? Tipping points in the chairs. They don't allow you to switch, do they? After, Can after I have a pee, please, Dave? But you had one before we started, so I'm <laughs> right now. <laughs> Sheffield. I've got to go with Sheffield. Sorry to lose. I go. Uh, it's an interesting one, because to lose, I'll go to lose. It's Olympics to lose, isn't it? It is. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> you swapped the lines around then. I saw what you did. You, you try and be, try and catch you out. You never catch your kid. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. I go to lose on that one. I fancy that. Uh, so oh, who's Mike from last week anyway? We don't you, talk about ca- Catch up with him. We don't talk about Mike. Maybe not. Has he had a shave yet? I don't know. You tell me. Oh, oh, oh. Mike from last week. Oh, Mike from last week. Yeah. The early one. Drew's mm. <laughs> <laughs> mate, Mike. What was his second name again? Hunt. Hang on, are you getting that bored because we've not done Swinton and Rochdale? Is that the what was coming next? That's it. Oh, it's, it's the big game of the weekend. We've got the, about it. Oh, it's only taken an hour and 20 minutes to get to it. Right, Swinton and Rochdale. Swinton. Let's give them the win. Uh. All right, I'll go with opposite to James. I'll go Rochdale. I think Swinton has got too much in the bank now. Uh, and Witness and Lee. Apparently, Witness has got a few injuries, haven't they? Yeah, they've got Witt- a Witt- Yeah, Witness are very, very uh, weak at the moment. Um, Look at some uh, of the players they've got in the I think team. Sam Freeman, who, who enjoyed a, a stunning debut the other week. I think he's he's carrying an injury. I think he's 50 50 whether he'll play as well. He's got four tries last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they seem confident that he'll be able to play. And then, but then you've got Jaden Hatton as well. Is it Callum O'Neill? I think got a lot of young players. I, I, I know they've got a fantastic academy winners, but do you know what I mean you, yeah. it's a very very young squad that at the minute well, uh, for the time though I mean that's a big yeah. that's a big difference I'm so I'm going with Leith yeah I, I'm going with Liam Liam Hood winner yeah that was good I think Stefan Marsh Stefan Marsh to win it for them uh, Stefan's done some great stuff but unfortunately doesn't look like scoring many tries <laughs> he's, he's very good bringing the ball out from his own line but where's he been playing for Lee this year He's been playing on the wing. Yeah. He looks more centre to me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what He always looks like he's more comfortable. Yeah. Like, he's played two games, I think, at centre and looks a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, Lee's just announced the sign of James Laithwaite as well, uh, who had uh, retired at the end of last season due to succession of injuries that he kind of suffered. But um, I hope it works out for James, because when he was coming Agreed. through at Warrington, he was yeah. a, he was really highly rated, he's, wasn't he? He's it? highly rated. He's just been falling foul of a few injuries. He's a lovely guy, and I think... I, I wish him all the best and I hope he does get back to that form and hopefully oh, injury free you see my heart is saying lovely that's a cute message <laughs> yeah, my heart is saying really nice guy oh. yeah my heart is saying he's a nice bloke yeah. we're all nice at heart oh, it's only the arrogant ones who looks like uh, no, <laughs> no uh, yeah so, we, I, we, we wish him all the best don't we obviously we don't we don't He's been he's changed a, his tune he's, now while we're being so he's, nice. He's, he's been through a couple of rough years. Um, so, um, hopefully he can... So, Lee, can have a, Lee with my heart. Lee. What says you? I'd say Lee. Oh, I'd okay. say Lee. Uh, Lee. Easter Monday. Batley against Swinton over at Batley. Batley. Easy. Batley. Bradford at home to Barra. Bradford. Yep, Bradford. Featherstone against Toronto. That's your sky match. Toronto. Toronto. Three o'clock on cage now. You know what? I'll go Featherston, I think. Mm-hmm. I agree with you on the other two. Yeah. But I'll go Featherston on that one. I, uh, somehow, they've, they've been the only team that's managed to wangle two home games over the course managed of the season. Managed to what? They've managed to wangle. <laughs> oh, I was thinking so. I thought you said something else. Yeah, let's not set him off. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't start giggling. Don't start yeah. giggling. Uh, Lee against Dewsbury. <laughs> home match for the Centurions against Dewsbury Rams. Uh, <laughs> I'd say Lee. <laughs> See, you have started off now. Yeah. Look at face. God, his bottom lips going. Rochdale against Sheffield. 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 To lose against Halifax. To lose. Oh. I I agree with all of those that you've said. <laughs> you're uh, right. And you're off yeah. against Witness. Yeah. A bit excited, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Witness. I think. I think he's still have all these injuries and you don't <laughs> catch him. Yeah, depends. A lot of these players are on to do two games in quick succession. I'll go with witness, but I can see it going either way. I think Lucy ever had been laid and he's getting some Cavani or something. <laughs> um, but I'll go with witness. Fair enough. I, I'll go York. Okay. I'll go York. Um, it that, seems like, uh, it, no, it seems like an age since we've, we've got mention about the Challenge Cup. So, yeah, the draw... I think of the draw. The draw has pitted Hull against Castleford. Uh, that's going to take place Friday the 10th of May. Also on that day, Wakefield against Widnes, Dewsbury against Halifax, Hull and Cassie's on Sky, by the way. Saturday the 11th of May, Bradford against Leeds, 2.30 on BBC One. Be a good game, that. Salford and Hull KR also taking place at 2 o'clock on that afternoon. On Sunday the 12th of May, whoa, Super Sunday, Warrington <laughs> against Wigan, 2.15, BBC One. 
Huddersfield against St Helens. I think that's six o'clock kickoff on Sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've not decided when they can play Catalans and Doncaster yet. Although I reckon it's got to take place on that Saturday length. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a good game. There's a lot of good ties to look forward to. You've they always see, they always see get an home draw, don't they, Catalan? Yeah. Did they have like White Table at home last year? Uh, no, no. They went, they went to they went to York, didn't they? Did they not play White Table? Yeah, well, they played Whitehaven and then played York in the next one. Right. Okay. Yeah. They, that, play, they played White Table the year before as well. It's like, yeah. it's like every year. It's good. You know, it's going to be. Yeah. Hey, hey, it would have been, been very tasty if it were at Doncaster. Do you think Doncaster would have been right up for that game? Or do you think maybe. Doncaster will take a few fans over there? Maybe. Maybe. Make like a weekend of it. Donny fans on the P again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You look like you look like you think you do. It's just like bringing back memories. <laughs> uh, I remember those days when I was on the B. <laughs> um, I think we've had. I think that's that's a good set of ties. Yeah, it is. Apart from about, uh, that's uh, a better set of ties than I've got hanging in my wall. Do, do you do you think uh, in the Charles Court? The low, the team in the lower league should be the home side against the super league sides. It's luck of the draw, isn't it? I think. I don't think it makes much difference because I don't think there are that many people into know. these games these days. But do, do you not reckon it just? I don't know. Give it, give that a little bit of an advantage to the well, do, lower league. Well, then do you not think that if it's a, the bigger grounds or the super league grounds, maybe the lower league clubs so obviously get a share of the gate? I think mm-hmm. they'll be they'll be looking at the bigger stages. I know, but come on, Jen. It's not like we're Anfield going to Halliwell and Jones, is it? Oh yeah, admittedly, but they're still, but they're still, no, I, still no, getting good figures. No, because from, from my I, experience... I mean, there's no guarantee that you could end up playing a game at the DW Stadium, because they might yeah. switch it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, from from my experience, I think uh, like Super League fans like going to them like, uh, lower, lower league grounds. Uh, I remember when... Um, <laughs> I feel like we're warming up the whole music again. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going to Batley. Oh, in that hill, still I, I, I remember um, Wigan getting. I think it was twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. I can't quite remember. They went up to Batley. Uh, yeah, they, they, they did. Uh, but I, uh, Dewsbury, they, they drew Dewsbury in the cup at the Telly Stadium, and Wigan took uh, about a thousand fans down there. Do you know? Because how often is it that we can play Dewsbury? Uh, Dewsbury is very very rare isn't it and, and when they drew Swinton as well uh, Swinton got a, a very good gate on it it was, a, it was like a kind of atmosphere and, uh, I, I don't know I, I, I prefer it to, to be honest it just gives gives the lower league clubs that little bit of an advantage and probably a little bit more money than what they get from travelling away I mean I, I, I have to admit you know because uh, as much as we thought being over at Thato playing against Dewsbury mm. You could see some of the Dewsbury players when they came out to warm up. It's like, what the heck have we come to? But that's always one of the best amateur grounds in the country as well. It was very well appointed and really, really, really nice for, for an amateur club. But it really did give them a bit yeah. of advantage. I mean, that was 10 all at half time. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I just think. It's like the. No, no offence to Doncaster, but they're not, they're not going to win in Catalan, are they? No. They're not. Whereas. They'd have, they'd have a, a chance if, it, if they were at all, uh, but that's just my, my yeah. opinion on Again, it. I think it's just look at the draw. I can imagine if, 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 if Catlin had to go to Whitehaven ra- last year rather than Whitehaven having to go to, to Perpignan. I, I just want to mention two or three games from the previous round which took place at the, at the weekend. Uh, Jordan Lilly coming up with the Golden Point winner for Bradford against Featherstone. It's the second time this season that only a point separated those two teams. Um, uh, so I, I believe that was a fantastic game. Again, big congratulations to Doncaster on defeating higher level opposition. Um, I can't remember whether you both tipped it last week. Halifax against London. Halifax knocking London out. Was no, a, I, I, I predicted London, but I said I wouldn't be surprised if uh, yeah. Halifax... Uh, they, they really did. And, and again, I'm always conscious but, that we never talk enough about Halifax yeah. on the show because they, they know, deserve so know. much credit for stuff like this. They're, they're a team like in, in between, aren't they? Yeah. They're, they're on the brink of something special, but there always seems to be the brink. There always seems to be just that level between them and the next level. It's, it's a strange one with other fans. And, and Lee were in front in their game against uh, Hull Kingston Rovers for 74 minutes mm. virtually. Um, and then of all the people to win it, Craig Hall, the former league player as well. Just get those type of things. Typical, isn't it? Typical. Um, 
Any other comments, Drew? Oh, is that us no, going? that's it. That's us done. No more comments. I think people have got bored of us. <laughs> Sorry, I bore you. Yeah. But yeah. I still need to apologise. <laughs> right, that's us done. That's us done. We'll be back again we're next week. We're now with golden balls. We've got a we lot to do. Polish. We've got a lot to stop going on about. Uh, and eat James, our, our brand James needs sustenance. Are you going to be eating any uh, purse of eggs over the weekend? I, I'm off for a Kinder Egg surprise. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nice.